Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It's the 29th of August. And after last week's huge amount of updates, this week is really, really quiet, so this won't take long. But as always, really do appreciate a like, subscribe, comment, and share, and hit that bell icon. Uh, new videos this week, so I did post part three of the DevOps Masterclass. So here I really talk about some tooling with examples in Azure DevOps and GitHub. I then posted a video about interacting with RESTful endpoints using PowerShell with some demonstrations of actually Azure and how I get tokens to authenticate to those endpoints. And then just because there's a lot of stress in the world right now, just for a bit of fun, uh, people kept asking me, what do I eat? So I posted a bit of fun, uh, what I eat during an average weekday, and uh, why I come up with a number and what I eat. So if you were really bored and just wanted to laugh at what I eat, there you go. All right, so the couple of things actually that have changed over last week. So the ND and the NCV2 series VMs are retiring uh, end of August 2022, so moved to the new high performance computing SKUs kind of around that. The original A series VM is retiring uh, end of 2024, so move to the AV2 or something else. And actually, really, what has happened this week is just a whole bunch of other retirement things that as I started to look at it, as I, I don't want to put a point for all of these. But just kind of super, super fast, we can kind of see hey, look, Node 8 support in Azure Functions is retiring, Python 3.6 is going to retire. And again, you're getting lots of notice for all of these things. Uh, Azure Synapse, Compute Optimized Data Flow is retiring in three years time. Um, Hard-coded IP addresses retiring in three years time. Uh, async, multi-step web tests, there's that kind of ND series thing I talked about. Postgres SQL version 10 ends uh, in November 2022. Java 7 from App Services, 29th of July 2022. Transition to the new App Insights, and it's just really a whole bunch of retirements. Cloud Service Classic deployment model I talked about before. Hey, we can now move to kind of the new one that is available. Some compute optimized data flows, PHP 7.3 ending, and there are those A series VMs, and the old B2C redirect URL. So a whole bunch of things kind of, hey, they're, they've passed their prime, so they're going to be retired out there in the future, but Certainly notification there, so you can go and get on to something else. Then on the miscellaneous side, so this high trust certification is now available across kind of 51 regions. Now, this is part of the healthcare industry certification. It's built around this common security framework, a CS, CSF. Now, this is shared responsibility. So the whole point of this is there's aspects that Microsoft are responsible for as part of the platform, as part of Azure. Then you're going to build on top of that, you provision resources. And so as part of this high trust certification, yes, Microsoft has its responsibility, but then you have to make sure you carry that forward and you're doing the right things. So what they actually have as part of this is actually a blueprint. So remember, the whole point of a blueprint is it gives me the availabil availability of this construct that I can lay down on the subscription and I can apply things like Azure policy, I can apply things like actual templates and more. So what this is actually gonna give me is, hey look, there's a sample blueprint available here that I can actually use and with that, it's gonna put the right things in place to help me carry on that shared responsibility to make sure I am doing the right things for the things I'm responsible for. And it talks about the various artifacts it's using, and it's really built around Azure policy. So you can see, hey, I'm auditing for these things to make sure all of the parts you are deploying carry on meeting those requirements to make sure you're staying in compliance actually with that. So that's kind of a key point. But now, hey, if I'm in that industry, that is available. And then Azure Policy Guest Configuration is now available. So remember, the whole point of Azure Policy is it's about my governance. I can lay down a policy 
that says, hey, either I want to be able to audit for compliance for these configurations on my Azure resources, or maybe I actually do enforcement, maybe I do remediation on these configurations. Then on the Azure Resource Manager, we have things like virtual machines. Well, they have a guest operating system. And there are various different actual technologies where I can apply a declarative configuration to the guest OS. So declarative means, hey, I'm telling you what I want it to look like. I'm not telling you how to do it, but this is what I want it to be. Chef, Puppet, PowerShell, Desired State Configuration, DSC. The benefit of using a declarative technology for that is that I can then actually check for drift. I can check for, is it looking the way I want it to do? So it's a great way to actually track that compliance. Well, now through Azure Policy, I can do those guest configurations. Now it's going to leverage PowerShell DSC3 um, for Windows. For Linux, it's going to use a combination of PowerShell DSC3 and Chef Inspect. But it's going to give me that ability to both apply configurations for auditing and configuration purposes. Now, this actually works for both Azure resources and Arc managed servers. So I can apply those things, hey, in the Azure cloud, but also anywhere I'm using Arc. It's going to run every 30 minutes to kind of check on this. And there's a whole number of policies now available that I can go and see. So if we actually go and look at this, let's jump over for a second. <clears throat> so if I quickly just go and search, for example, if we go to policy, and I'll select that, we go to our definitions, and I'm just going to change this to just look at policies. I'm just going to look at the built-in. And for my category, if we scroll down, I can see we have this option for guest configuration. So I've got that selected and now, whoops, didn't mean to click that. <laughs> now we can see all of these different options available to us. So hey, audit Linux machines that have specified applications installed. So I'm checking, hey, do you have these apps in the guest OS? Audit machines on which DSC configuration is not compliant. Certain security. So there's a whole huge number of these you can go and look and you can create your own but now I'm leveraging that ability through Azure Policy to actually go and apply in guest configuration using these declarative means for both that configuration, but now as part of my compliance tracking, I can include elements of the guest configuration itself. So that's a, a really nice new capability. And that's it. So that's all the updates this week. I said it was pretty quiet, but I, I hope that helped. And as always, until next week, take care.